board meeting. We have a very full <coughs> agenda here tonight. Um, but per usual, our first item is public comment. So if we have folks from the public who would like to comment. Yes, Share. We'll share. We'll, we'll share. share. Good evening. My name is Waylene Greeny, and I'm the executive director of the Amherst Community Connections. I'm here tonight in that capacity to go over the uh, potential impact of the uh, PVTA hike increase on the users. As you note, that there will be a public hearing this coming Thursday here in Amherst at the Bank Center at 2 o'clock or 5 o'clock. And uh, I would like to remind you, uh, first of all, the increase right now proposed is beyond the 20% operating cost increase that PVTA has reported in the press in the past four years. So given the operating cost is about 20%, my feeling is the fair increase in order to be just and fair should be around that percentage point. And uh, if you look at your uh, pass, your, your uh, packet here that I put together, uh, the increase in the fare is between 20% um, to 400%. So that's a huge increase. If you look at them, most of them is increase, you know, above 20%. So that's itself, it's very scary, 400% increase on the bus fare. So just for you, if you are going to Northampton uh, for Cooley Dickinson Hospital, for example, for most people who go there uh, for checkup or whatnot, especially people who go to emergency room because they have no primary care doctor, right now it's $1.50 plus 25 cents transfer. In the near future, that will go up to $2.50, and that's a huge increase. So in my mind, if you are going to go according to a 20% increase rationale, which is much more in line with the cost increase, you will help the people who go to Northampton, uh, Leeds, Florence, Holyoke, Springfield for various reasons. They will be able to afford it. Uh, you might think people go there for pleasure or for family visit, but no. Most of the people who go to these places, they go there uh, just like us, who go there either for doctors, for dentists, uh, for safe passage service, for the college church uh, breakfast program, uh, for the Northampton Housing Authority housing application, and uh, for soldier owned services, for the veteran uh, administration in Leeds. <coughs> and they go there to go to Valley Medical, Valley Medical Center. That seems to be the only place that will accept mass health patients in this area. And for Starlight Center, that's for mental health recovery and rehab in Florence. And when they do go to Holyoke, they go there to apply for food stamps. They go there to apply for homeless cash assistance. And if they go to Holyoke, they could go there also for social security card replacement. And then finally, if they go to Springfield, they go there to replace their state ID when they go to the registry of motor vehicles. Or they go there for the shelter, the Worthington Street uh, shelter for women, Worthington Street shelter for men. So these are the destinations they make, and these are the reasons why they go. So the cost increase placed upon them, it's really high. So I have a list of recommended price according to the destination, or according to the uh, purpose, uh, according to the uh, one way and to the destination in this uh, material that I presented. So for these two reasons, I'd like to ask you, given the majority, about 60% of the bus riders they are living in poverty, and many of them are homeless. So when you place increase at the 400% increase rate, it's an unjust and unfair burden on them. And I also want to remind you in the PVT advisory board that our town officials, such as Ms. O'Keefe and Mr. Musanti, they are the representatives from the town of Amherst, along with about 18 other representatives. Um, they are mostly, all of them are uh, government representatives. None of them, I noted, they are consumers or writers of the PVTA service. So I think to have a more informed decision-making process, in the long run, I would suggest the PVTA advisory board 
is to include consumers who use the bus service regularly. So I hope that you will review the cost increase and consider recommend to your advisory board that a new advice, a new adjusted increase of the fare be brought back to the public for further recommend for further input and further uh, consideration in the future. So I hope that July 1st uh, fare increase will not be based on the current approved schedule or the per current approved um, amount by the advisory board. Thank you very much for your uh, you. patience. Thank you for coming in and, uh, and just note that this is not a select board action. We're not the Select Board doesn't make a decision about the PVTA fare increases. Mr. Misanti is uh, not only the town's representative to the PVTA Advisory Board, but he's also the chair currently. Um, so it's good information for us to have. We appreciate it. And you should certainly make this information available at the public hearing that they're holding for purposes exactly like this this week in Amherst. Thank you very much. Ms. Brewer, do you have a question? Yes, comment? thank you for clarifying that because I was going to ask you to do that. And then my quick question for the presenter was, in this, in this set of columns here, the recommended fare <coughs> increased by 20 percent. That is your personal basis based on the 20 percent concept, right? That's so the what you recommendation. Mean proposed was by PBTA. The recommendation you're referring to is your recommendation. It's correct? the recommendation from my agency, Amherst Community Connections. Okay. That's what I was just trying to make sure. Which, which thing was proposed by who and which thing was recommended by who? Right. Yeah. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for the information and thank you for coming in. Anyone else from the public like to make comment at this time? Okay, we've got about eight minutes then for our first <coughs> scheduled item, and so we can take care of a couple of untimed <coughs> items in the meantime. Uh, let's see, <coughs> just so folks know, we have a whole bunch of street closure uh, requests on here, all of which um, are not happening until sometime later so we can get to them and, and fill time with them as we need to but we don't need to stay late tonight to make sure we get them all we can continue these to a future meeting um, just as an FYI so we might as well start with the things that are more timely just to make sure that we uh, get out of here on time and I will note that we do have an executive session planned for the end of this meeting um, and before anything else happens ACTV if you're able to turn up the speakers in this room um, I think that the microphones here are not projecting well into the room, so that would be appreciated. Um, okay, um, Ms. Stein, how about we start with the uh, taxi driver and chauffeur licenses? Near the back. And we have a revised motion. Yep. <clears throat> okay, now I have it. Um, I move that the select board uh, move, uh, approve a new taxi driver slash chauffeur license for Ajit Fuller of Liberate MA, R Richard Harvey of Montague MA, and Adam Zucker of Leverett MA on behalf of Ambassador Taxi Cab and Transportation. Second. For the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. I move that the select board approve a new taxi driver chauffeur license for Mitchell Snyder of Amherst, Mass, on behalf of Green Transportation Incorporated. Second. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 And that is unanimous. Okay. How about um, we have a special liquor, li a couple of special liquor licenses. I move that the select board approve a special all alcoholic license for Danielle LaFerriere and Gary Wardlaw on behalf of Amherst College Catering for a <coughs> catered student event in the Friedman Room at the Keefe Campus Center, Amherst College from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. Wednesday, April 4th. Second. Further discussion, Ms. Brewer. It's Greg Wardlaw, not Wardlaw, Gary. yeah. Pardon? The person's name is Greg, not Gary. It just got transposed, you know, four letters as a G. Got it. <laughs> okay. Uh, further discussion. I what you transpose, but okay. <laughs> All in favor, say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Next. I move that the select board approve a special oil alcoholic license for Tony Maroulis on behalf of the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce for a margarita tasting at the Eric Carl Museum of Picture Book Art, 125 West Bay Road, Amherst, MA, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Wednesday. March 28, 
It's summer soon. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay, still five more minutes. How about? All right, let's do, um, let's do some parking and street closure requests. Um, so starting near the bottom of the first page, because we don't want to start okay. with the top one. So. I move that the select board approve the reservation of 18 metered parking spaces <coughs> on the south side of the Spring Street parking lot and two metered spaces on the west side of Boltwood Avenue, specifically the fourth and fifth metered space moving south from Spring Street on Saturday, April 24th, 2012, from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. for the UMass Amherst Cannabis Reform Coalition's Extravaganza Festival. Second. And just to clarify, that's the 28th of April, not the 24th. And what did I say? You said the 24th, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, Okay. Uh, this is what is happens when you don't get enough sleep. I know it. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 I was not aye. trying to cut short the That's air. unanimous. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The League of Women uh, voters. Okay. I move that the select board approve the reservation of the first eight metered parking spaces on the west side of Boltwood Avenue originating at Spring Street, moving south towards College Street, beginning Thursday, May 3rd, 2012, through Sunday, May 6th, <coughs> 2012, from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. each day for the Amherst League of Women Voters annual book sale. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And that's unanimous. The Cushman one on the other side. Which one? The Cushman. One on the next side. It must be over here somewhere. Yes. I move that the select board approve the blocking off of Henry Street <coughs> in Cushman Village for their annual May Day celebration on Saturday, May 5th, 2012, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Second. Further discussion? Oh, Mr. Hayden, I'm just going to say that's, that's, a very, that's a very nice event. You should go. So. Thank you. Mr. Meese. I would just add that. Uh, DPW superintendent, police, and fire chief have all reviewed this and are okay with it. Thank you very much. And those uh, materials are in our packets. Um, all right. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Garden Club? Yes, I move that the select board approve the reservation of 18 metered parking spaces on the south side of the Spring Street parking lot for their annual plant sale setup on Friday, May 11th, 2012, beginning at 6.30 a.m. Through no later than <laughs> 6 p.m. for the Garden Club of Amherst. Now I'll second. Now it's second. There's further discussion. I um, was puzzled, and that's why I hesitated just for the setup. It's we have the request materials in our packet. Um, it's, it it's seems as if in my head they should be setting up on Friday for a sale on Saturday, but I may be wrong. Can you just double check the request? We can always amend it if necessary because this isn't for a while. I can find it. Yeah. Oh, they've just requested for, for that slot. Just for Friday. Friday the 11th, 18 spaces, 6.30 to 6 okay. p.m. All right, well. I so moved. <laughs> and I so second. All right. It's been moved and seconded and discussed. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And that is unanimous. All right. Base is uh, State Bike Week. Sure. I move that the select board approve the reservation of 34 metered parking spaces by closure of the Main Street parking lot on Wednesday, May 16th, 2012, from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. for a bike rodeo and on Friday, May 18th, 2012, from 6.30 a.m. to 12 p.m. for the annual bike breakfast and bike show. Second. For the discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. 
All <clears throat> right. Let's see. So now it's 6.45, so we'll save that other one for later. Uh, okay. Make sure you remind me so we don't leave without doing it. Um, if I could just mention briefly, Ms. O'Keefe, it's so helpful that the motions now say annual and that we have these wonderful maps. So all the people involved in making that happen, it really does make a difference as to us just being able to say, yep, 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 that's the thing, <laughs> and uh, makes it work much better. And you wouldn't think that it would be so complicated <laughs> to get a system but, down like this, but it took took a while. All the right people with all the right information to make it happen, and uh, we are very appreciative awesome. to Ms. Roussel in particular for really standardizing that and making it very um, informative and consistent every time. Okay, so our 645 item is Lions Club Service Award. So we have tonight, this is fun, uh, the Lions Club would like to present an award to Barbara Bills and Cherry Hill Golf Club. So Mr. Cromack here to talk about this. Welcome, and if you could identify yourself for folks at home. My name is Todd Cromack, and I'm the president of the Amherst Lions Club, and also a board of director for the Northampton Lions Club, and also a second vice district governor for the 33Y Western Massachusetts District Lions. Uh, thank you for seeing me on such short notice, and uh, the reason I'm here tonight is really to thank Mr. Mazzani He's been very supportive. I'm really diligently working hard to get an Amherst Lions Club back up in this town. It, we used to have one years ago, but it dissolved from lack of interest, not recruiting members. So for the last three, two <coughs> years, I've done a lot of work to try to rehab it and rejuvenate it. And we had a Leo Club induction ceremony last week of Junior Lions, the middle school that went very well. And Lions Clubs are only as good as the community that they serve and the community officials that they serve. It really has to become a good partnership. And for the last two years, we've been having a global golf tournament at Cherry Hill. Uh, it's been a phenomenal success. success. Uh, we have people every spring or in the January, they want to play in this. And... Um, the money that we, wrote, uh, we do raise always goes back into the Amherst community. And this year, we've determined that a good portion of it, we want to do donate to Amherst Leisure Services, principally because the diligent and hard work uh, that Barbara Bills has done to help the Lions Clubs raise money. Uh, last couple of years, we bought pedestrian safety signs that went to, one went down to Crocker Farm, and they got distributed to various Lions Clubs communities around Western Massachusetts. We purchased them from the proceeds for the golf, from the golf tournament that's held at Cherry Hill. It's very popular, and it's lots of fun, but we couldn't do it without Barbara. So I'm here tonight that on behalf of District 33Y Lions in Western Massachusetts, if Barbara could come up, I have a special recognition for her. <clears throat> District 33 Lions present Barbara Bills Cherry, of Cherry Hill Golf Course in appreciation of distinguished service and leadership to the community in 2011. Thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, I had a sweatshirt, it hasn't, hasn't come in yet, <laughs> but it's got multiple district lions on it, so she's going to have to wear it. Hopefully, I will get it before the glow ball. But this woman is, you guys got to, she's a keeper. And uh, <laughs> this year, as I said, we're donating, we'll be donating most of the proceeds this year's tournament. We want to sponsor some kids for this, the camps that can't otherwise be able to afford. And, um, Thanks to Barbara for all you do. You know, we really, we couldn't do without you. She's just great, so. Thank you, and you know, one of the, thank you. And you gotta hang that in the pro shop. Oh, where you, you where can you see? <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I'm just really fortunate to, uh, one of the things I enjoy most about my work at the golf course is working with the various charities that host events and tournaments at Cherry Hill. And I have to say, it's just been a real pleasure working with the Lions Club, and especially with Todd and Dwayne. Um, they've just been fantastic, and their enthusiasm just carries through through the event. And, it's, and we're just happy to help and be a part of that 
big Thank picture. You. Well, we couldn't do it. Yeah, you're welcome. And our next, it's actually, the, this year's is scheduled for May 19th. So if anybody right. has any spare time <laughs> at, in the evening, we're going to be out there. If you drive by Cherry Hill and look closer, you're going to see these look like falling stars in different colors, but it's really the golf balls out there around the course. So it's really fun. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I don't know if I, I was going to probably address the next select board, but we have, we want the, we'd like to have the I-Mobile at the uh, Rotary Fair that same day as the golf tournament. And I know it was kind of late. I talked to your assistant. I might not have made Deborah. it on the agenda today. Right. Not but today, but uh, but it's in the pipeline. So we will great. we will be approving great. that. So thank you, select board. We appreciate your time. And thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Bye. All right. Thank you very much for coming in, and thank you to Ms. Bills and all the folks at Cherry Hill for uh, for uh, what a great help they are to so many organizations in the community, and and to Ms. Bills in particular for really turning around uh, the Cherry Hill Golf Course. It's been a tremendous success under her leadership. I have to say it's the only golf course in West Massachusetts that allows carts at night to play for this tournament. So to keep for for long term, and all the money goes back here. So thank you. Tremendous. Much. Thank you so much. And for folks who couldn't hear that, he just noted that the uh, that Cherry Hill is the only golf course in Western Mass that allows carts to be used at night. So that's very interesting, Mr. Wald. Since I drive by every day, I noticed the first day it was open. There were golfers out there. So right. Terrific. Terrific. Um, and I'm going to ask ACTV again if it's possible to turn up the speakers in here. This is a change that we've made recently, and it doesn't seem to be working right now um, and it would be very helpful if we could get some uh, some volume in <coughs> here so that our microphones are amplified okay <laughs> keep working on that I'd appreciate it okay uh, let's see what else we got here 652 we've still got three minutes until our 655 item so um, let's go back and finish the, um, the uh, cultural yeah bazaar. cultural survival bazaar Okay, I move that the select board approve the reservation of 10 meter bags on the west side of Boltwood Avenue, originating at, a, at Spring Street intersection, moving south toward College Street for vendor use for the Cultural Survival 7th Annual Bazaar on the South Common from 8 a.m. Friday, May 25th, 2012, through 9 p.m. Monday, May 8th, 28th. 2012. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> aye. That's unanimous. Okay, we could do the seasonal license renewal. Speaking of Cherry Hill Golf Course, right below that. I move that the select board renew the seasonal wine and malt liquor license <coughs> for Cherry Hill Golf Course, 323 Montague Road, manager Barbara Biltz, for operation from April 1st, 2012 through January 15th, 2013. Second. We have to do this. Further discussion. We do have to do this. And the other thing is um, we had talked about extending this so that it covered the, um, the uh, snow day. Winter Winterfest. Fest. Winter yeah. Fest. Yeah. Uh, blocking my mind there. Um, but we're not able to do that right now. Town Council says that we can't extend it that far. So we'll deal with that separately. But we do need to get their seasonal license renewed. Uh, further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 And that is unanimous. Okay, what else can we do here? How about the committee appointment at the bottom? I move that the select board confirm the appointment of Christiane Mayer Healy of Amherst MA to the Conservation Commission for a term to expire June 30th, 2013, as recommended by the town manager. Second. Further discussion? I would like to say thank you. Indeed. It's a tough job. Uh, yes. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> Unanimous. Okay. So I don't think there's anything else on here that we can do. Minutes? No. Uh, Ms. Stein has already <laughs> indicated no she has way. not had time to check out the minutes no yet. Way. So we will hold those off I until another meeting. You want to do it? We're not going to do the minutes tonight? No, I, I was just okay. teasing her. That's the one time I did read them, and she didn't. Okay. <laughs> we'll put them off. All right, so it's 644, which is the same as 655. Uh, so 
Our 655 item is sustainability issues, and we have Ms. Ciccarello here to talk to us about a variety of, um, of items related to sustainability and the upcoming sustainability uh, festival. So, Ms. Ciccarello, if you come forward. Good evening. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Um, well, I don't know if you've already covered the parking issue, so I'm We have sorry, not. We thought have we'd not. wait for you. Oh, oh good. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, well, the parking request this year is the same as in the previous two years. We're hoping to um, block off the parking on Boltwood Avenue <coughs> from, um, from College Street to the street that's totally slipping my mind at the moment. Spring, I'm sorry. Spring Street. Spring Street, thank you. Um, so we just want those 22 spaces. They're the same we've requested every year. It's mainly for vendors to drop off, um, unload their goods, and then they actually do park elsewhere. But we do need that for some of our vendors who have larger equipment where they need a vehicle um, to be there throughout the day. We also have um, some electric vehicles that will be parked there throughout the day as part of the event and we also have some people that have some accessibility issues that we would like to be able to have them park right next to the common. Um, the event, if I can give a plug for the event as Please. well now while you're waiting on the, voting on it. Um, the event is being held on Saturday, April 21st. It will be sunny, so I'm told, <laughs> by vendors who were there last year where it was not. Um, but the event is being held from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m and it will be on the town common. We have approximately 100 plus vendors this year. We've had a lot of um, response from vendors, so um, a great variety. We have a lot of um, artisans. We have products and services for renewable energy. We have nonprofits represented. We have lots of um, town organizations uh, represented as well. So it's a really wonderful event this year, live entertainment as always. Uh, a lot of people that are actually donating their time to the event this year, so uh, we are very grateful to them. It's just going to be a fabulous event, and it'll be very much a family-friendly event. Another um, feature that's happening this year that's different in previous years is that we're going to have a textile drive that's being put on by the Recycling Committee, and they're asking citizens of Amherst to bring clean and dry textile items. So it's not just clothing, but if people have even rags, um, torn sheets, anything that they have that's laying around their house, they could bring to the event that day and there will be a vehicle to take the clothing and the, the um, reusable items will be donated to the Amherst Survival Center and to the Fisher Home Hospice Shop. So those will be the good items, but the items that are just rags will actually be recycled. So we want to encourage people not to just throw them in the garbage, but to actually bring them to the event because they can be of further use. Terrific, thank you. All right, would folks like to do take care of the parking request right now? <coughs> Ms. Stein, that's the top. Sure. Uh, it's like the second motion on the, yep. I know where it is, I just have to rows. find my motion sheet. I move that the select board approve the reservation of 21 metered spaces on the west side, Boltwood Avenue, originating at Spring Street, moving south towards College Street on Saturday, April 21st, 2012, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m for the Amherst Sustainability Festival. Second. For the discussion. It is noted, I uh, will note on the request that the meters get bagged the night before. Correct. And so that's kind of an administrative thing that the parking folks take care of and that will be communicated to them. Other discussion? Ms. Brewer. I didn't get a chance to count, but one of the pieces of paper says 22 and one says 21. <laughs> I believe it's 22, but. I wouldn't want somebody to think it's they just all shouldn't the spaces, bag right? one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pick one in the middle and don't. I move 22 just in case. There you go. <clears throat> all right. I trust and you. Then I'll second 22. 22. We'll call it 22. All right. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Okay. <clears throat> Other sustainability fair issues then. So you told us about the fair and when it is and the exciting new um, textile recycling. Um, Anything else you'd like to tell us about that or get right into the student cleanup? You could get right into the student cleanup would be fine. <laughs> um, and actually, the student cleanup is actually somewhat partnered with the Sustainability Festival. Am, um, Am, UMass Amherst has a lot of events that are going on um, the day, few days after the Sustainability Festival, and we wanted to try to partner in some way. And we have a student here, Cameron, who I'd like to invite to come up and speak to the Please. select board as well. Let me just grab a chair. 
And I'm going to actually let you let Cameron tell you what he's got planned. Okay. For that. Welcome. Thank you for coming in. And please introduce yourself for the folks at home. Hi, I'm uh, Cameron Cackley. I'm the Secretary of Sustainability in the Student Government at UMass. Um, so for Earth Day this year, I have been working on kind of a campus cleanup type event um, where we're going to have a, hopefully a lot of students come together and um, split up into groups and go to different parts of campus and clean them up. Um, so we thought as a partnership between the school and the town of Amherst, we could have one of those groups um, go to Kendrick Park in Amherst and have that be part of the cleanup. Um, mainly because, well, <laughs> mainly because of its um, location um, being kind of right between the center of town and campus. Um, we thought it would be a good location for residents and students to come together and um, do something for the town. Terrific. Thank you. So you're looking for residents to show up there at a certain time and help with the community group? Correct. Um, and I guess also looking for your approval. Um, just don't want to have a bunch of students going out of the park and cleaning up for, <laughs> you know. Kendrick Park is under the town manager's authority. And he's busy at the moment. So. <laughs> <laughs> he's looking for uh, a permission to use Kendrick Park to, to clean it up and if they need any permission for a bunch of kids to suddenly be out there cleaning it up. Yeah, that uh, I have authority or use of Kendrick. So what I would ask you to do is follow up with Deborah in my office, town manager's office, and you can an anticipate a, an affirmative answer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to the request. Thank Terrific. you very much. Thank you very much for doing that. Thank That's you. a wonderful initiative and great. much appreciated. And thank you to ACTV for fixing the speakers. This is great, much better. I do want to say too, if um, residents are interested in participating in that, uh, they can contact me via the town website and I can get them in touch with Cameron. Terrific, thank you. And is there a particular time that that's gonna happen that folks should um, know about? And then yeah, we're meeting on campus, so. Great. All right, and we also have rideshare program information. Um, the rideshare program, I'm going to invite um, Daniel Alumjan to come up and speak to that. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. <laughs> this, I can't help but feel like I'm on Judge Judy. <laughs> I've never been to a meeting like this. Um, I've uh, come to request uh, the Town of Amherst's uh, partnership uh, from MassRides. I'm from the Department of Transportation, uh, MassDOT in Boston, and uh, my job, and a department in that is MassRides. Um, my job is to work with organisations, towns, companies around the state and introduce our programs um, that help reduce driver alone traffic um, to the workplace and also provide commuter assistance. Um, where a, um, our, our overall arching mission is to reduce uh, traffic on the roads and improve air quality uh, as well as safety on the streets. Um, so uh, we're requesting uh, the town's support as well as the town manager's support um, in partnering with Mass Rides. Um, I've been chatting with, um, with Stephanie here about, about this and she's asked that I come and speak to the board about that. Um, the advantage of partnering with Mass Rides um, we, uh, a couple of the programs that I just want to highlight, um, New Ride, which you probably might have a, a sheet about, it's our state's rideshare um, database, uh, so people can jump on that to uh, link with other commuters to travel together. It's also our state's uh, rewards program for travel in green. So anytime anyone walks, bikes, carpools, rides the bus, uh, or even works a compressed work week or a four day work week, um, you get points. and um, with those points, you uh, spend them on, you know, coupons, discounts at local restaurants. Um, there's some uh, events, um, and as well as um, to shows and attractions like that. Um, so it's it's a lot of fun, and as I said, it's our state's rideshare database. So uh, we really want folks to jump on that. Um, so it's a it's an advantage for town employees as well as residents um, to take advantage of that. Um, also with partnering with Mass Rides, um, the Emergency Ride Home program would be available for uh, all town employees um, and by getting a hold of that you just need to also complete the um, Emergency Ride Home partnership form and um, perhaps that's something that 
um, the sustainability coordinator, Cindy, uh, sorry, Stephanie could um, um, facilitate that. Um, also, partnering with Mass Rise would allow me to come to events, do staff outreach days, community outreach days, such as the environmental, uh, the sustainability fair. Um, yeah, so that's that's one one reason why you'd want to partner with Mass Rise. Have I well, covered everything? Um, yeah. That sounds like a wonderful program and very beneficial to the town. And I understand you've already spoken with Mr. Musanti about this, and and it's really you who kind of make our partnership official. Is that right with the yes. program? Um, and so it, this is eligible, uh, folks who uh, are outside of the town's workforce are eligible to be part of this as well? Yep, for anyone that lives or works in Massachusetts, and it's, you know, it's a part of MassDOT's, you know, greening the state, um, you know, curbing greenhouse gas emissions and also providing a transportation, you know, service and for companies and towns and organisations. So, uh, yes, it's, it is available for anyone that works or lives in Massachusetts. Terrific. Yep. Other questions? Ms. Brewer. So I understand that the new rides program would be available to anyone and then the emergency ride home program. Now we can be a partner with or without being part of that as I understand it and I'm wondering if we, I know we've talked about it in the past but whether or not we have such an official thing and then I was also going to ask you, if, I know UMass has talked about having such a thing and I don't know if they have an official arrangement like that or if it is in fact done through this. So for the town's workforce, even the, you know we can be partners right away if you decide to right. do that. But in terms of the ride home program, that would be a separate step, right? Um, it would be. I would ask Stephanie to chime in, uh, but we're interested in exploring that as well. Right. The, um, the the really nice thing about the emergency ride home program, I think I believe that is only for. Amherst employees. Yep. That's that's not right. that program isn't open to the residents. Of right. But the benefit to that would be that anyone who does choose to commute to carpool, ride a bike if something should happen during the day, they can actually have um, support in getting home, taking a taxi, and they don't have to coordinate that through me. They could just make a call, get a ride home, get a receipt, and then they can. Um, get reimbursed through mass rides. Yep. So and it, so the town isn't responsible for any of that reimbursement. It goes through the state. Yep. Right. Ms. Brewer. Just to follow up, but we'd have to have an agreement in place. That would be the it's partnership. Like, right. So we don't have to necessarily specifically um, partner for the citizens to be involved in new ride or right. even the employees to really be involved no. in new ride. The right. partnership is specifically for the emergency right. home. home program. Okay. Right, and then and do for you commuter events, have an arrangement with UMass or with any other colleges? Um, we do with Amherst College. That's okay. one organisation in the town that we've partnered with. Um, I'm discussing with UMass Amherst at the moment, um, talking with uh, uh, Enza there about you know also doing this at UMass Amherst. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, but yeah, new ride. Anyone in the state can jump on there now. It's commute.com, um, and you can start. You know, you can join that straight away. Uh, the emergency ride home thing yeah, is a, is a sign-up partnership agreement as well. Thank you. Yep. Other questions or comments from Select Board? Mr. Hayden. Yeah, I would make one. I've, I've got 700 points already with the new oh, ride good. program. You're a new <laughs> rider? So. I noticed you've got the, uh, the, ankle, the ankle band. That's uh, from MassDOT as well. One of the best handouts that you guys okay, have. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so the, the rewards points, are they fairly widely distributed. Are there places in Western Mass you could redeem these points? I'm not doing it for the points, so I don't know yet. <laughs> uh, there, there are some places, yes. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. And if folks were interested in being involved in that part of it to yep. be, um, to be a, a business that was providing benefits through the points, would they contact you also through the website? Um, they would go to the New Ride website, newride.com, N-U-R-I-D-E.com. Um, if a company wants to provide rewards to green commuters, <clears throat> that would be an avenue to go through, yeah. Um, right. yeah. Thank you. Ms. Rain. Yeah, i just make com another comment. And when I was doing the research on this, I just noticed that Amherst seems to be a pretty good community for this kind of thing because we've got clumps of places that people go to. Yeah. And, um, you know, so you can catch up with other people who are going there as well. Good yeah. point. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions or comments about this, these programs? No, all right. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Thank Good you luck. for coming in. Thanks. <clears throat> all right, and before we let Ms. Ciccarello go, we also have the revision to the town's fuel efficient vehicle policy and the, um, 
the suggested revisions are in documents that are in our packets. And uh, if you could just refresh folks' memories about this. This is part sure. of our application for the Green Communities right. Yes. This is uh, criteria four out of five criteria that are required to become a green community. Um, just to give you a quick update, the official deadline uh, has now been released. It's May 29th, and I do believe we are in excellent shape to make that deadline. Um, thankfully, it was the end of the month. That was a good thing. I'm very happy about that. Um, so this, um, this policy has already actually been adopted by the select board. It was uh, or approved by the select board on August 8th of 2011. So these revisions are just minor revisions to update the policy with the current guidelines. So for each round of application, they revise some of the criteria. So to keep this consistent and current with the current <coughs> policy. Um, the highlights, as you mentioned, are, are in the document um, in red. And they're, they're very uh, minor, very few changes. So the part on page two that talks about the exempt vehicles, that's just sort of a tweaking to wording. It's not Correct. making significant changes to what are and are not exempt. Not, well, the only, um, I think the, the change that the state has made is just that they want all of our vehicles to be listed. So prior, before this, it was just the um, non-exempt vehicles to the policy had to be listed. Now they want us to list all of our vehicles so they can sort of have an idea of what we have and keep track of it as well. Okay. All right. Any questions or comments? Mr. Hayden. Yeah, just uh, this is very much along the lines of the presentation that we saw at town meeting. God, I can't remember now if it's a year or six months ago, but we, we did see all of this is not and, and voted to support it. So, all right. Other questions, Mr. Guad. Just again, for, for the benefit of the audience, <coughs> uh, you know, people often ask about hybrids, and the point of this is efficiency. You know, we obsessed with these small little tiny details, and the point is to be efficient, no matter how we get there. And again, that the heavy vehicles that have the higher service needs are exempt, so the public understands because the, pub the questions come up again and again. But it's also been discussed in JCPC, you know, with vehicle replacement. So the police and the fire know exactly what kind of vehicles they have, what the replacement cycles are and all that, just to assure the public that everything is being maximized really in the quest for energy efficiency. Thank you very much. And so uh, it, we've, been, we've been sort of using this policy now since August, and I don't know if any vehicles have actually <coughs> been acquired in that time, but um, Mr. Musanti, is this sort of, is this, has this proven to be, is it expected to be easy to, to manage and track in that way? Uh, yeah, especially with some of these common sense updates to the policy where it makes sense to evaluate our uh, goals and progress on uh, fuel efficient vehicles in the overall context of our vehicle uh, inventory. So we really are in the early stages of this and it's, it's, it is a part of our capital planning now in a, in a more, much more deliberate way it's not a uh, nice to have kind of sidelight. It's part and parcel of the discussion about uh, fleet maintenance schedules and things like that. So yeah, it's beginning, it's beginning to have a more pronounced effect. And we actually had some requests. And I know we're all waiting with bated breath on the final recommendations from uh, joint capital planning uh, later this week. Uh, but there were some fuel efficient vehicles that were new to the capital plan request list altogether this time around. At least I think you can say in part uh, spurred on by the, the uh, <coughs> goals behind this policy. And I would just take this opportunity to uh, publicly thank Stephanie for all her work on the Green Communities Act application, which is a big project in and of itself. And uh, uh, we're really looking forward to applying uh, before May 29th, and we're looking forward, while we can't guarantee the outcome, we're, we're optimistic, and we're looking forward to uh, reaping the benefits of that designation, which is primarily monies to pursue real live uh, energy efficiency and sustainability uh, projects here in Amherst. So we're excited about it. Thank you. It makes so much sense for Amherst to be a green community. This will really be <laughs> wonderful. Do you have any idea when you might hear? No. Um, I think, you know, when it's, we get the application in, um, the next round, I believe, of applications for the grants themselves um, will probably be sometime in June 
So I imagine that because basically what they do is they notify you once you submit your application, they'll notify you of whether or not you've um, received the designation. And then you're um, informed of the amount of your award. And then you can apply for your grant for that amount for whatever projects. I, and that's really the, the basic idea of putting together a five-year um, energy efficiency plan is that you identify those projects that you're going to pursue and use the money for. So you've, you've kind of got your ducks lined up, so it should make it a smoother process. Great. Ms. Stein, you had your hand raised? Sure. Um, a question or, or a comment I was going to make, or do you want me to make the motion? Uh, you can do whatever you'd like. <laughs> um, I was going to ask Mr. Musanti a question about the um, buses. It's wonderful <clears throat> to see the hybrid uh, sign on some of them, and I just wondered if you had any idea what percent of our fleet, so to speak, is hybrid? The PVTA fleet? Mm -hmm. uh, it's still a very low percentage of the overall. I, I think sure. that particular grant was 10 or 12 buses, um, several of which are servicing in the UMass Transit service area or area. Right. It's still a relatively low uh, percentage, but PVTA very much wants to expand upon that. Um, the good news is we have 10 or 12. The bad news is that they're very expensive per vehicle, although over the life cycle use of the bus, which is many, many years, we, uh, PVTA will end up saving a lot of money as well as all the environmental uh, benefits that accrue. Okay. Thank you. I move that the select board approve a revised fuel efficient vehicle policy for the town of Amherst as presented to govern the replacement of all non-exempt municipal vehicles with fuel efficient vehicles whenever such vehicles are commercially available and practicable, <clears throat> said policy to apply to all divisions and departments of the town of Amherst. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 And that is unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you for all the information. Remind us one more time to the Sustainability Festival. April Saturday, 21st. April 21st, 10 to 4, Amherstown Common. Terrific. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you. Okay, we have a couple of more minutes before we get to our 720 item, and I'll just remind folks that this is not because I'm crazy about timing. It's because you don't want anybody to tune in or be planning to come in for something that <coughs> we have started uh, already when it's scheduled for a time later than that. So that's why we try never to start early. Oh, no, my iPad has a different time than my phone. I have to panic, panic. That's right, and my iPad at 720, but on my phone at 717. <laughs> Yeah, okay, we're sticking with the phone time. <laughs> Ms. Brewer. Can I ask a question? You may. One of the things I was messing around with here on my phone is I'm not entirely convinced the PVTA um, hearing information is on the town website, but I'll look at that more later. My particular question associated with that is, as the chair of that, is that something you would plan to attend on Thursday? Can people expect to see you there or that they'll see other members, or how does that work? Because I know it's a big board. I will be there uh, for at least one of the two sessions. It's two to four and five right. to seven on Thursday yep. at the Bank Center. But there will be you know, some number of members of the board there. There'll be some members and, and a number of staff from PVTA and our administrator, Mary uh, McGinnis. Right. All right. Uh, let's see. Two more minutes. What else can we do here? <clears throat> I think we used up all of our untimed items. Um, I'll note, I apologize, I had completely forgotten to update the calendar preview um, section of the, uh, of the document, so I didn't include anything about our next meetings. Uh, we don't meet next Monday because that is the night before the town election, and by tradition, the select board never meets then. Um, so our next meeting is on April 9th. And on April 9th, we will be doing, of course, a lot of warrant article stuff. We will also be approving the personnel manual. We will be receiving the um, COLA 
recommendation for non-union employees, uh, and we're going to have another liquor license hearing. We have uh, an application from Cumberland Farms on College Street, Route 9, down by um, Southeast Street. Uh, so that will be a liquor license hearing for a new license at 7.15, I believe, that night. Um, after that, the following week, the Monday is the holiday, so the next meeting is Wednesday, and that's the one that we have at the police station. Um, and uh, so, and then we'll meet again the following Monday. But I apologize, I should have had the April meeting information and, and some of what we're expecting for those on the calendar preview, but that did not make it on this time. Okay, 720. Our 720 item is a winter shelter update, and we have uh, Dave Zomack here to talk to us about that, as well as Ms. Laura Quinn from the uh, Craig's Doors service provider. So. Mr. Zomek, how has the shelter season gone? Thank you very much. Um, it's actually going extremely well. Um, thank you for having us tonight, and I think um, I will try to be very brief and then turn it over to Ms. Quinn for some more specific details. But as the board knows and, and the public knows, uh, the, the shelter is a CDBG-funded uh, activity this year, and so I wanted to quickly uh, run down some of the uh, um, the, the reporting requirements and, and where uh, Craig's Doors uh, has been on those. And overall, I think the, the, um, the report is very good, very positive. Um, we're very you know, uh, thankful again to have Craig's Doors as, as our provider this year. Um, the partnership with First Baptist Church, uh, with the numerous, numerous volunteers, church volunteers, college volunteers, community volunteers, uh, the fundraising, I think, is going overall uh, very well. Um, uh, wonderful long-term uh, volunteers. Uh, I was there a couple of times, and um, I know that Waylene Greeny and Kevin um, Eddings are taking uh, the lead with food and doing a terrific job with the food preparation for the night meal and the breakfast. So overall, um, uh, what we've seen has been outstanding. Um, Craig's Doors has been up to date on all of their uh, monthly reports. Those have all been received by CDBG staff. Uh, we've had uh, kind of a quarterly meeting as well. Um, so reports that are required by the CDBG program are all um, on time and, and uh, in, in our possession. We've had a number of meetings with Craig's Doors staff and board, including um, Jerry Gates and uh, Jerry Weiss is now on the, the board uh, uh, as well. Uh, we've had a total of three site visits on 1216, 115, and 29, um, staff from uh, the town of Amherst visited the shelter. I've been there personally twice, once in the morning at once at night, with health director Julie Fetterman, and what we observed was all um, um, going extremely well. Um, we've also had numerous check-ins uh, with Chief Nelson and with um, uh, Officer Linda Newcomb, who is assigned uh, to that night shift and does a terrific job for the Amherst Police Department. Um, so uh, meetings, um, um, various reports all submitted, uh, as well as the, the financial reports. Um, the Greg's Doors is at, at about 60% uh, expended, total expended, and we're expecting uh, a bill here shortly for the end of March, and then we'll just have uh, the month of April left. Um, so uh, billing is all up to date and has all been processed. Um, I think I'll let... Um, Ms. Quinn, go into more details. Uh, we've, we've had um, good report on, on the number of folks that have been housed, and perhaps you're going to talk a little bit about that. Um, I do know that the church and Craig's Doors continues to work creatively with, with some guests who um, have not been able to abide by the rules of either Craig's Doors or, or uh, First Baptist Church, and there has been some trespass orders given, um, but that's fairly, um, fairly standard uh, for the operation there. And um, in the future, uh, I know that capacity and, and some of the nights you have exceeded uh, the number of people that you can actually shelter there, and, and that's something to be talked about uh, down the road uh, for next year. So overall, I think it's been very positive. Perfect. Questions for Mr. Zomek before we go to Ms. Quinn? Ms. Brewer? And perhaps this is more of a question for the town manager, but what's the expectation in terms of what the select board will see? I realize that the block grant community um, advisory committee may see different or somewhat different set of details, but what's your expectation as to what we might see when the shelter season's over and what we can look forward to and mention to people is going to be coming up or is there going to be a report to the select board? 
I, I would anticipate a, a end of season report. Uh, we haven't talked in any detail yet about the actual form that that would take, but it would be a, you know, touching on the same issues that Mr. Zomek has touched upon tonight. You'd get some report, you know, late <clears throat> spring or probably in that time frame. Right, because it's something, this is terrific, <clears throat> but something in writing at the end of the season, right. you know, so that we have that each year would sure. be helpful. Sure, if I could. At the town manager's direction, um, we, we were asked to just come in and give a five right. minute or less update tonight, but we'd <laughs> be happy to uh, give a more detailed written report. As I've said, uh, Craig's doors have, have provided all the monthly uh, required reports. We have all of those and, and would be happy to summarize those at the close of the season or great. just before the end of the season, uh, whatever the select board and the town manager would like. And it's you. also been my understanding that as a CBGB funded program that uh, we are committed actually to providing a report right. on how those funds were used. Uh, I think it's April 25th, is that the mm -hmm. scheduled date, which we would certainly <coughs> be doing that. Um, obviously by the end of the season, our last date will be the 29th of April technically, uh, and we'll have then that month to be able to wrap up all of yeah. our data for the entire season, but we certainly anticipate providing a full report okay. that would just sum up everything at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but I, again, I want to thank David uh, also and just use the word, uh, it's been a very mild winter. I think that means a lot. <laughs> uh, we're happy for many, many reasons for it to have been a mild winter. Uh, certainly for the guests at the shelter, for the overall community, uh, for the mission that we have in order to shelter those that have nowhere else to go. Uh, but also we've had incredible cooperation and, and my purpose really for being here is to thank you all <coughs> for the incredible support. Thank the select board, uh, the town manager, Dave, uh, Nathaniel Malloy, Ruth Turner, uh, the Amherst Police Department, certainly Linda Newcomb. It's, it's really shown that we can do this. We can make this happen. We can do it well. Uh, we can do it cooperatively and we can really make a difference. Uh, I understand that my comments this evening are to be brief and uh, frankly to illustrate some continuity as well. So uh, really uh, as the executive director at this point of Craig's Doors, uh, it's also been my privilege to be able to work with an incredible staff, uh, to be able to have Kevin Noonan on board, as you all know, who's been our director of programs, uh, who's been managing the shelter. I'm also happy to announce that he will be moving up to the position of executive director as well. I'm moving on to other opportunities. I think we've really set a, a wonderful standard here. And I'm looking forward to looking at the housing piece more specifically, and for Kevin and all the, the board of Craig's Doors to move on. In the same way, we know we have next year, and we're, we're gonna look at how we're gonna fund that, how we're gonna all work together. So we have lots to do. Uh, I have a report here. <coughs> My comments brief, and I, as I say, I put this in writing, so it will give you something to work on. And then, really, it's my honor and privilege, and uh, it's it's to my great joy to introduce Kevin Noonan to provide you with the real specifics about this year's shelter season, if I can. Okay. Here, a moment. Allow me. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. We got his names. Thank you. So, yes, uh, thank you, and um, I just want to acknowledge and thank Laura for not only being the founding member of, uh, one of the founding members of Craig's Board, Craig's Doors Board and Organization, but also uh, the name Craig's Doors came from a comment that Craig Lorraine himself once made to Laura Quinn about uh, wishing that he had a door that he could close after having a bad day. Um, I'll keep my comments brief because I know you have a, a busy agenda as well. So now that winter is returning, we'll be petitioning for another six months of operation, if that's okay with you. It's freezing out there. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know what the, to make of this weather. Um, it's been, as Laura, I just wanna echo what Laura said without going through the whole list. Um, it's, been, it's been very helpful to have a collaborative effort uh, with the town, as well as with the houses of worship. 
Uh, the Amherst Survival Center has been volunteering with us as well. Uh, Linda Newcomb, as both David and uh, uh, Laura, Laura said, have uh, been, her, her team has been great and we work very closely with her to, on specific individuals, you know, when, as David said, getting creative with who to trespass and who not. We rely very much on her uh, assessment of people since she's had so much experience. Uh, we've had uh, about 119 different people come through the shelter this year, and uh, of that number, uh, 70, uh, sorry, 95 of them were men and 24 were women. There has been an increase in the number of women this year, and uh, we are working with uh, First Baptist Church, which uh, I can't say enough good things about these people. We really, we virtually dislodge them from their church at 8.30 every night, all of their activities, and our staff comes in at 9, and uh, uh, we sort of take over the, the church facility because of the way the uh, permit was granted by the state, the waiver was granted by the state to, to allow this uh, activity to, to part, be held there. Uh, one of the stipulations was that no other activities could be held in the church while we were there. So that makes it difficult for the church to have any kind of meeting that goes over time. Can you imagine if the select board had to be done by 8.30 every night? Uh, we could dream. <laughs> on the other hand, this is a big room. We could use this space for a shelter. In any case, uh, um, it, they've been very helpful, and, and we met with the Dave and, and uh, Chief Livingstone and Chief uh, Nelson, as well as Dave Wiskevich, and we uh, we're talking about trying to make it safer for the women for next year. Right now, they're uh, behind a curtain, and there hasn't been any major issue, but uh, it would be a little bit more um, dignified and certainly more secure if we could have them uh, within some more sturdy walls. And there is a room right behind the fellowship hall where we're working right now, which can accommodate that purpose. So now that the, um, the way the CDBG funding works, we have to get our permits in, in, in line for next year. So uh, Jerry Gates will be going to Boston uh, to apply for a renewal of uh, year three and a modification of year three and uh, a new three-year waiver for the coming year. I think the uh, hope is on the part of the people at the First Baptist Church is that uh, there won't be a need after the next three-year renewal, so that would be four years counting the one that remains from this three, uh, that there wouldn't be a need for them to do this in the future because they're optimistic that we're going to be able to find a permanent site. So uh, uh, we're looking forward to uh, um, his success in that and uh, continued uh, cooperation from the town. We know the resources are stretched very thinly and we appreciate the CDBG support. We couldn't do it without it. And uh, we certainly appreciate the, the help that we've gotten from not only the community but other agencies. Meg Wright from uh, Elliott uh, Homeless Services comes once a week and is in contact with us throughout the week. Uh, just uh, telling us about this or that person and uh, working with them and getting them uh, specifically with people who are mentally ill. And uh, Waylon Greeny has done a, a wonderful job coordinating the food uh, and, and uh, feeding every night. Uh, it's been uh, it's tremendous to watch. And uh, she also has been working with many people uh, to help them find housing. And about, by her count, I think uh, uh, 10, but some of those are just people who have left town. But I think our statistics show at least five have given, have been able to acquire permanent affordable housing. And also Wailing with Jerry Gates has a, a mentorship program where people are able to get jobs and I think another 10 people have uh, had some temporary participation in that. So uh, in the interest of being brief, I'll, I'll end it there and uh, we're, we're happy to welcome Diana Stein this, this Thursday and uh, any of you that would like to come and visit are, are certainly welcome as well. Thank you very much. Thank you for this report and uh, and for doing such a tremendous job in your inaugural season as the as Thank the you. service provider. Uh, questions or comments for these folks? <coughs> Anyone? Oh. Well, we really look forward to reading the report. Thank you so much, um, Ms. Quinn, and and good luck to you as you move on to new opportunities and uh, and uh, best wishes for continued success for the shelter season. Thank so, you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Zomek. <coughs> All right, 7.35. So this now begins our marathon t working towards town meeting. We have 31, is it 31, something like that, articles on the warrant. We've got the draft warrant. Uh, actually, it was on our desks tonight. 
warrant I was looking at earlier didn't have any numbers on it, so I don't know how many we came up with. Yes, 31 exactly articles. Um, we are scheduled to sign the warrant on Friday morning. Everyone remembers at 10 o'clock. That will be a very brief meeting um, just to sign the warrant. That's the only thing we're doing. Um, and so between now and the end of, uh, actually before the end of April, because town meeting starts April 30th, uh, our last meeting in April is the 23rd. We hope to fit in all 31 of those articles. And it's, it's a challenge to, to schedule everyone's availability and get a bunch of articles that make sense together. So basically we're starting off easy. And we're starting off with the articles that are very simple, they occur every year, and practically we could probably speak about them in our sleep. But we all do need to, uh, rather the select board does need to take a position on all town meeting articles to recommend, not recommend, or take no position on them uh, as is part of our town government act. So tonight we will start with those. On your agenda, they are not, the articles are not numbered because those numbers did not happen until today. But. Um, we will go through these fairly quickly. We have in our packets a uh, information sheet from um, Finance Director Sandy Pooler um, that describes each of the articles in brief, uh, and that's especially helpful for folks who are following along at home. But um, I think that's all we need as an introduction. So the first article on the list that we're dealing with is the reports of boards and committees. This is the standard opening article for every town meeting, and it is about whether or not the, the body will hear reports of boards and committees that are not available in written form. It's a housekeeping article, to say the least, and that is our first article, uh, Ms. Brewer. I was just wondering if we knew in particular of anything that was coming up. I know some, you know, some years there are obvious things, like the 250th committee or whatever, but. We just had the warrant review meeting today. Typically, we know about um, requests for reports at the second meeting, which we call the motion review meeting. That's in a couple of weeks. At this point, only the finance committee report is expected, um, but the moderator didn't expect to have heard from other folks who might want to speak yet anyway. Okay. Ms. Stein, would you like to make the motion on Article 1? Sure. If I can find the motion sheet, which has a tendency to migrate. What you mean? Uh, Did you also have a comment? I apologize. Well, I was it. just going to volunteer to take this one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I always do. <laughs> it's by, fine by tradition. Yes. Okay, I move that the select board, I move to recommend that the select board approve the, it's a kind of funny motion here, as you may notice, uh, Article 1 reports of boards and committees. I think we're moving that the select board recommend. recommend. Yeah, yep. that'll do it. Okay. Okay. I second that recommendation. recommendation. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Ms. Stein, right. would you like to speak to that? Anyone want to fight Ms. Stein for Article 1? All right, Ms. Stein, it's all yours. Article two is transfer of funds for unpaid bills. Um, this is an article that obviously is about um, paying unpaid bills for the previous year. We don't expect, at this point, there are no unpaid bills um, uh, that anyone is aware of. Should they become available, or should they uh, show themselves, should they what am I trying to say here? Should we find that we have unpaid bills, the recommendation would be to pay them because you know that's how you maintain a good credit rating. Um, so typically what we do with this article is we, uh, oh, and I should say that if there are no unpaid bills then the Finance Committee will move to dismiss this article. Right. Um, that's funny, it actually says select board. That should be oh. Finance Committee. Another warrant to edit. Um, Shall I make the motion? Uh, yes, please. I move that the select board recommend um, April 30th, 2012 annual town meeting article two transfer of uh, funds for unpaid bills. Second. Further discussion. So I'll just note that we'll recommend it if there are any and we support dismissal right. if it will be right. dismissed. Yeah. All right, that is the sense of Second. the select board. Thank you for the discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 And I'd be happy to take that one too. <laughs> She's going to get in all the easy <laughs> ones, really. I guess I like the that? easy ones. What okay. can I say? It's all yours. Article three is optional tax exemptions. Um, 
This is another one that we do every year, and this has been done every year since I believe 1994 is what the memo says. Um, state law allows for certain property tax exemptions for qualifying elderly, veterans, blind, surviving spouses, uh, that in order to uh, allow those, those exemptions up to the 100% uh, qualifying amount, town meeting needs to approve it every year. So we do this every single year. It is always unanimously approved by town meeting, and it's one of the ways, it's, it's one of the very few ways that we as a town can help to grant some um, uh, tax assistance to, to f some folks who qualify. Any questions or comments about Article two, uh, 3? Okay. Stein, would you like to make I move that the select board recommend April 30th, 2012 annual town meeting, Article 3, acceptance of, opt of <clears throat> optional tax exemptions. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Oh, I, I like can, that one. I can deal with that one too. Okay. Um, I think that some of us who've done these before, if you yeah. have text anybody, written out about them. If anybody <laughs> really wants any of these, they really only need I think to. I've done it and you've done it. And yeah, so if yeah. you want it, you can have it. Or can you wait for it? Can sure, you, you it? want it? All right. Alyssa has this Ms. one. Brewer is right. taking that one. All no right. problem. I like that one. It has a little report with it and everything. Next up, we have uh, authorization for compensating balances. So this is the one that we have to also do every year. That um, if this allows the treasurer to enter into banking relationships whereby the, the town might get something, uh, something beneficial, a beneficial interest rate or whatever in um, return for having a certain amount of money or whatever invested in the bank. Uh, we need to approve this because otherwise it could be considered an appropriation, uh, an expenditure without an appropriation. So this just is a, is a technical way of approving that banking relationship. And per usual, we have no such of these banking relationships, but um, giving this approval just allows the treasurer maximum flexibility. So we do this every year. Questions or comments about that? <clears throat> All right, Ms. Stein, would you like to make I move that the select board recommend April 30th, 2012 annual town meeting, Article 4, authorization for compensating balances. Second. Further discussion, Mr. Hayden. I guess the toaster might go to Craig's doors. Yeah, right, exactly. I always think that the toaster, <laughs> get a toaster in return for your savings. Okay. Uh, further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Next. Who wants it? Oh, yeah, sorry. Who would like that one? I've got that one all written down, too, if anybody wants my text for it. You want to do it, or should I do it? Um, I like to not do anything, but... <laughs> oh, all right. Well, <laughs> then that's clear. I'll do it. <coughs> okay. Ms. Stein, or did I hear somebody on the... Or did right? somebody over there want it? I, I've, I've, do we I've got have to credit your notes every the time we reach your position? You do not. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Next up, retirement assessment. Okay, this is, uh, this is the town's annual assessment to the Hampshire County Retirement Board. This, uh, we have information about how much this increased this year. This is, um, this is a different number. Number nine. Thank you. Just yeah, sorry, they're not in order. Um, so the total amount of the town's assessment to pay for our um, town school and library but non-teaching uh, elementary school employees is three million four hundred and sixty eight thousand three hundred and twenty four dollars that is up two hundred and eleven thousand five hundred and thirty one dollars or six point five percent from the current year this is one of those bills we absolutely have to pay so there we go questions or comments about this Ms. Brewer so the number's less than is re than is listed on the current. Do we just put a big number because we weren't sure? Or I will follow up on that. Uh, typically, this appropriation is the general fund portion only. Uh, so it it may well be the smaller number. It, but yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we will clarify that and amend the draft article language if needed for it's Friday early. morning. 
it's early days. And presumably the select board will support it, whether or <laughs> no not it's matter how much it is. Not a penny more. Okay. Uh, further discussion? No, I'm sorry. Other questions or comments? No. no. Ms. Stein, would you like to make the motion? Shall I go ahead? Yes, please. I move, <clears throat> excuse me, I move that the select board recommend April 30th, 2012, Annual Town Meeting, Article 9, Retirement Assessment. Second. Further discussion. Mr. Hayden. I, actually, I realized what the problems with the motions, I think the word to is missing. It's to the April uh, 30th, 2012, Annual Town Meeting. But that's just, you were, you were struggling with that, and I just realized why. Thank you. All right, further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 And that is unanimous. And Next. who's going to do that one? I can do Thank it you. since I complained about it. Okay, sounds good. Brewer will do that one. All right. All right. Okay, so um, do you want to describe the next one about yes. the regional lockup? So the next one is the regional lockup assessment. This is the Hampshire County regional lockup, essentially the, the jail that was established several years ago. Um, and w with an assessment to all of the participating towns, this assessment has not increased at all in, during that time. I believe it was 2006 or 2007 when this started. I should look at my memo. Whatever I'm just my notes. talking so. off the top of my head here. But, um, but I remember when we first, uh, when the town first dealt with it, that it was said to be approximately a dollar per person. It was essentially apportioned by population. So our population is a little bit bigger now, but our, but our number has not gone up. But, uh, but the main point here is that the number has not changed and that this is, again, a bill that we have to pay in order to participate in the system. Questions or comments? Ms. Stein, would you like to make the motion? I move that the select board recommend, should I put the two in? I'm to recommend two. The April recommend 30th. to the April 30th, 2000, I don't think that works. 12th town meeting. Um, eighth, April 30th, 2012 annual town meeting, Article 10, regional lockup. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That is unanimous. And I'll take it. Final article. Between our notes. Between my minute. notes and your notes. All right. Oh, you're doing that. I keep forgetting to assign it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Ms. Brewer is taking that one. Well, we're, we're, it'll be good because it'll be done. <laughs> yes, <Right>. indeed. <laughs> okay. And the, the last one. one is the reserve fund. Reserve 14. fund. This is Article 14, a reserve fund. Um, the reserve fund is not to be confused with the town's reserves, free cash or stabilization, though we call that reserves. The reserve fund is a different fund, and annually, uh, typically, we appropriate $100,000 to that, and that gives it to the finance committee to use um, primarily for snow and ice expenditures. So it's, a, it's if something within the $100,000 expenditure amount comes in during the year, typically snow and ice, so that that can be taken care of uh, without going back through town meeting. Uh, and uh, as I said, we do this every year. There was one year it was reduced, and then at the end of the year it had to be increased again because $100,000 is what they need to work with for snow and ice. Questions or comments? All right. Ms. Stein. I move that the select board recommend to the April 30th, 2012 annual town meeting Article 14, Reserve Fund. Second. It took Further a whole discussion. bunch of articles before I figured out what you meant. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Further it's discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 And who's gonna take that? I'm happy to, but I'm also happy to donate it. <laughs> Too late. Too late, Stein. I got it. All, all right. right, fine. Ms. Stein will do that. All right. All, right. all assigned, all approved. <laughs> We're going to have to ask Mr. Musanti to turn up the volume on I his phone. <laughs> he's trying to find out who the new UMass Chancellor is going in to be. In fact, he'll, he'll be announcing that very shortly. Okay, yeah, we have 745 budget discussion. All right, pay attention. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> budget discussion, then we'll get to Mr. Musanti's report. Um, so the FY13 budget discussion, again, no one has sent in num uh, any questions ahead of time. Um, 
this jumps ahead a little bit and sort of skews with the BCG report that will be coming up, but um, basically we're, we're ready, and I won't have you do it tonight, but just to, to talk about it so that you're ready for it, to consider the um, Mr. Musanti's recommended additions and restorations list. We have been putting off that part of the budget and discussion about how we would prioritize that, how we would deal with these, uh, these extra uh, expenditure requests in the event that we received more revenue than the budget originally was projecting. Um, at this point, and so we've been putting that off to have more information about how much revenue there was going to be, et cetera. At this point, there is not an expectation of additional revenue, and in fact, we'll recall that the budget as it came in had was actually <clears throat> above the original expectations because we were expecting a 2% uh, increase in state aid, and in fact, we're now, we're now expecting level-funded state aid from last year, so we were working with uh, something like a $200,000 deficit, uh, or not a deficit, a gap, a funding gap between the original town manager's budget and um, and what revenue was projected to be. Um, so th that gap has basically been filled um, by a variety of, of you know, updates to revenue and expense projections. Um, so we're good with that, but we're not expecting additional money beyond that from the state at this point. We have sent our letter, as did the library, uh, 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 in support of the extra 65 million, not extra, the $65 million that the governor has proposed allocating in the fall as an additional appropriation, um, as was done this past year, that amounted to about $500,000 for the town of Amherst. We have asked, as has MMA and as I said, <coughs> the library, we're, we're all advocating for, if they reasonably expect that money to be available, it would be much more helpful to us to know that ahead of time and have that as part of our baseline appropriation as opposed to it being an additional appropriation in the fall. But at this point, we have no information that that's going to happen, so we can't plan on it. So the only item currently on the town manager's uh, additional mm. funding list is the child care program, uh, subsidies for the after school child care program. Um, so like I said, we, we don't have to be talking about this in detail tonight, but the recommendation when we talk about it, which will be next time, is that that, that that's our mm. only that's the only thing we're looking at right now. You, you're basically withdrawing your request. With the information that we have right now, you're not recommending that we go further down that list than, than the child care. Uh, that's exactly right. And uh, we're still, uh, Superintendent Garrick and I remain optimistic that uh, in the very near future and prior to annual town meeting, we will finalize a recommendation on funding for after school programming. Uh, uh, cooperatively between the town's leisure services department, Amherst Public Schools, and uh, some private providers. Um, we are literally in just beginning to review uh, some detailed recommendations from an independent uh, outside assessment that the town and the schools jointly funded. So we're in the midst of digesting those uh, recommendations. Uh, I know there'll be one or more meetings with school and town staff and the providers in the coming days to review that. It's my intention, uh, and I have the support of the superintendent to come forward with a specific recommendation prior to town meeting for the select board to consider. And so BCG is expected to consider that initially at our next meeting, April 5th. You're, yes. you're hoping that that would be ready for that. Yes. Um, so, so BCG will have a recommendation that can further inform the select board's discussion of that uh, additions and restorations list, but I just wanted to kind of prepare you with that context for us to have the discussion next time. Um, the other point that needs to be made about the child care funding uh, is that this is not a new program. It's not an expansion of a program. This is to uh, fill in the dollars that are now missing because that program was not able to be funded through the community development block grant this year. So to leave that unfunded would leave a bunch of participating children and families uh, unable to continue to participate. So that's the priority, and that is, that is the context, like I said, in which we'll be having the discussion next time in case folks have other feelings about that list. Um, you know, start thinking about it now, and, and we'll have that discussion mm -hmm. on April 9th. Um, any questions or comments about that or anything else related to the FY13 budget? 
Nothing. Okay, Mr. Musanti, you haven't heard any new news out of uh, the state about money process? Uh, no. No, we don't anticipate a House uh, Ways and Means budget till probably mid-April now. So we're, as you said, we we are continuing our efforts to uh, try to convince the legislature and the governor to support building that 65 million of supplemental uh, state aid, uh, if there is a state surplus at the end of this fiscal year, uh, to build that into the base aid. But we are highly unlikely to know that, at least in a definitive way, prior to town meeting. And we're not counting on it at this point. All right, anything else about budget? All right, so then that gets us to the town manager's report. And before his bulleted items, he has a hot news flash for us. <laughs> and I apologize for my loud uh, iPhone, uh, but that was, uh, um, I have received word during the course of this meeting that the UMass Board of Trustees have it accepted President Koretz's recommendation to appoint Dr. Kumbal Subaswamy, uh, currently the provost at the University of Kentucky, to be the next chancellor at UMass Amherst. And uh, that was voted this evening. So uh, I know a number of us had the pleasure of uh, attending uh, at the university's invitation a uh, luncheon uh, uh, with him. Uh, and members, uh, alumni representatives, as well as representatives from uh, the community. And uh, I know all of us were impressed with, with uh, Swami's uh, intellect, his uh, deep experience at Kentucky and elsewhere in higher education, his leadership skills, uh, his fundraising uh, proven fundraising uh, prowess, uh, and his understanding, I thought, and sensitivity to all the things that fall under the umbrella of town gown uh, issues. And uh, I want to congratulate him and look forward to working with him in the months ahead. Thank you. Uh, next, uh, personnel update going back to uh, bullet points from the agenda. Uh, the board knows this, but we haven't talked about it at a meeting. But very briefly, uh, you know that. Uh, our Human Resources Director, Eunice Torres, uh, has decided to retire, and her retirement date is March 30th. And I want to thank Eunice for her service to the town and wish her the best uh, in her retirement. Uh, that puts a recruitment for that position front and center. It's one of the most important positions in the organization, I believe. Uh, and the basic timeline, as I envision it, uh, we have begun our advertising for uh, candidates for this position. Uh, and you can basically anticipate that will be really for the month of April. Uh, in May, I intend uh, to uh, uh, be involved with interviews of leading candidates. And uh, sometime in the month of May, uh, my goal is to make a formal job offer to the uh, leading candidate. And then the start date would be dependent upon the uh, circumstances and transition issues related to whoever that successful uh, candidate would be. But uh, as soon as possible after that is made. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I'm confident uh, that uh, uh, we'll be able to uh, recruit somebody who can really uh, uh, do a fine job for us. Okay. Uh, next, a uh, couple of items related to under the umbrella of safe and healthy neighborhoods uh, uh, initiative issues. Uh, uh, first, uh, you know that uh, uh, a week ago Saturday, uh, there was a uh, uh, event that was being promoted at a number of uh, downtown Amherst uh, establishments uh, called the Barney uh, Blowout, which is a pre-St. Patrick's Day, St. Patrick's Day-like uh, 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 event. Uh, and uh, 
while there was quite a bit of coordination uh, between uh, downtown bar owners who participated, th those that did, uh, and the Amherst uh, Police Department, we did have some reports of uh, uh, unruly behavior in our downtown. Uh, uh, there were, I believe, 10 arrests made over the course of that day uh, in the downtown area. Um, that has triggered uh, 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 some uh, post-mortem discussion uh, amongst uh, downtown business owners, including bar owners uh, and others, uh, and others in town. Uh, and my intention uh, is to uh, work with uh, the Amherst Police and uh, uh, the community, and uh, uh, we're having a meeting uh, with some of the uh, uh, bar owners who chose to participate in this event this, this past year uh, in the coming days, and we'll talk about uh, how it went and uh, what, what uh, lessons might be learned going forward. Uh, so I just wanted the board to be aware that that dialogue is ongoing. I just want to uh, mention the, the main point of confusion that there's been in, in feedback that we've heard is that this was in some way supported <clears throat> by the town uh, and that we allowed the bars to open early. We absolutely did not do that. They didn't even ask us. I think we made it pretty clear in the fall that, that such a request would not have been positively received, um, so they didn't even bother. What does happen is folks uh, line up to get into the bars very early because there are capacity issues, and so folks um, mistook that as thinking that the bars were open, but the bars were absolutely not open. The chief of police did a tremendous job coordinating ahead of time personally with each of the bar owners to make sure that they knew very well what their license uh, specified and that there would be no early openings. And, uh, and in fact, he reports that the bar uh, owners and managers were extremely cooperative before and during the event. Um, but, but there will be this follow-up meeting, and, uh, and we'll see how we dial down the obnoxiousness level of this event for next year. And <laughs> we'll, the conversation continues. Mr. Wald. <coughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, next, I wanted to follow up. Uh, I mentioned at our last meeting uh, a situation that occurred at a rental property on College Street where the police responded to a, uh, a report of uh, excessive noise. Uh, came upon a situation where there was a large uh, party going on. Uh, the party was broken, broken up by the police. Uh, in the course of their visit, uh, the police uh, noticed that they were very concerned about the what they thought were questions about the structural integrity of the main floor of that house, especially with the large number of people that had gathered. And working collaboratively with the Amherst Fire Department, Health Department, Inspections Department, and Mr. Garabijian, the uh, property owner, landlord, there was a temporary eviction notice uh, issued, uh, but work was done to correct deficiencies uh, in the uh, smoke detector system, uh, as well as uh, uh, securing the uh, integrity of the flooring, and tenants were allowed to move back in a couple of days later. Um, I wanted to follow up on that in saying we continue to work with that particular property owner uh, 
uh, based upon the very positive uh, collaboration that occurred uh, when we became aware of, and he became aware from the town of issues related with the College Street rental. Uh, our intention is to continue moving forward with him and looking at other, other properties uh, of his. Uh, I'm not aware of a formal schedule yet, but those conversations are ongoing uh, with the property owner and our anticipation is that we'll have positive collaboration like we had on the Spring Street issue when it was brought to his attention. It's very important. Thank you, Ms. Brewer. I'm just a little confused and um, I'll use my excuse for the first time of being out of town for eight days. But was this, is the, it says roof on this piece of paper. Why do I remember floor? from mm -hmm. the newspaper accounts. Mm -hmm. oh. not, not that I really, you know, one or the other, it's still bad. But uh, that's that's uh, Let's go with floor. caused by uh, me typing too quickly. <laughs> okay. I was like, there wasn't another one. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's almost all the same Thank letters, you. just in a different order. Exactly. Floor <laughs> Thank you. Just making sure there's one that we know that I need to give out. Thank you. That's the call to record. Okay. Uh, next, uh, I wanted to update the board on a recent uh, training session uh, held uh, for Amherst police officers by uh, representatives from the Burlington, Vermont Police Department, uh, in particular, uh, Lieutenant Jen Morrison. Uh, the town, uh, Amherst Police Department in Burlington have been in dialogue for a number of years now on uh, community policing issues, given the similarities uh, in the two communities hosting the flagship campus of the State University. Um, the training that was held most recently was on community-based and problem-oriented uh, policing, uh, and it's related to Chief Livingstone's uh, initiative uh, as the department has evolved to a change of what, what we call sector-based policing, where patrol officers are assigned to a particular uh, uh, sector neighborhood of the town with more focused uh, uh, collaboration and problem solving. Um, um, so we, it, the chief reports it was a very good training, uh, and it's really about sharing best practices uh, that include but not limited to changes, any potential changes to bylaws, uh, mutual patrol initiatives such as with university police and future trainings that might, uh, that might occur. So that dialogue is ongoing. Thank you. And I just want to emphasize for folks that um, all of these things are falling under the, the agenda title of Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods <clears throat> Initiative. Uh, and, and this is to emphasize the degree to which the town is paying attention to these issues in a really multifaceted manner. Um, the Safe and Healthy Neighborhoods is about a coordination and collaboration of different town departments to be sharing information on this uh, on these issues. It's working with the university and the folks there. Uh, we have a, a, a large and expanding relationship through the Campus and Community Coalition. There is no single magic bullet to how you solve issues like this. It is, it is about communication and coordination and education, and you're dealing with uh, a, a pool of folks who are changing 25% of them every single year. And by that, I'm, I'm referencing the students, of course. We have had tremendous turnover in the roles of the people who are dealing with them, especially on the university side, just in recent years. So all of these relationships get developed, the communication happens, but it still, it needs to, it, it always needs to grow and increase and spread. But um, I, I think that Mr. Musanti's report really shows uh, just one aspect of how committed the town is to dealing with this. Uh, his hiring recently of the new code enforcement officer, a brand new position wholly devoted to uh, to addressing this issue head on. Uh, the, the fact that the police are doing trainings with folks from other places about this, the fact that we're following up very directly about the uh, about the, the disturbances with the pre-St. Patrick's Day celebration, uh, as well as the, the problem property and the, dealing with the property owners. This is all just a, a small segment of the attention that is being put towards this. I know that in my role on the select board that the 
the thing that I spend the most time on outside of meetings and outside of planning the select board meetings is dealing with the town gown issues. Um, so there's just a tremendous amount of resources being dedicated to this on the town side as well as on the university side. Really excellent relationships being formed there. We had very strong, very positive conversations, I think I speak for all of us, uh, with uh, Dr. Subaswamy, the new chancellor. We were very happy to hear how seriously he took these, these issues and how much he, experience he has in dealing with them. So um, I just really want the community to, to recognize that uh, this is a critical issue facing the town, everything that has to do with off-campus behavior and its, its various implications, and the town is doing everything it can and really making progress. The progress is, is slow but sure, and, uh, and we're getting there. That's all. Thank you. And let me just add to that briefly. Um, appreciate that. And uh, the town is all in on this issue and by its nature the issues are difficult and the solutions are not easy uh, it's not about writing the next regulation or creating the next fine and all that kind of stuff there is an enforcement piece for sure but uh, these are uh, difficult complicated issues that are uh, I think if we're looking long term going to be best solved by collaborating so we have the Town staff has been reorganized uh, in a way, uh, and uh, but there'll be lots of outreach to uh, uh, current and future university uh, representatives uh, and landlords and tenants um, because we're looking to um, to stabilize and improve the quality of quality of life in all of our neighborhoods. And I know there is. Uh, a lot of support in the community for that effort. And so uh, I want to pledge the town is all in on this, uh, but it's going to be a collaboration because we're looking at the long-term progress that we can make together, which can only happen if we work together on this stuff. Um, in terms of recent and upcoming activity, I want to mention a couple other things. Uh, Last uh, Friday, the 22nd of March, uh, a number of us had the pleasure of attending a uh, luncheon uh, uh, by Amherst College at the Lord Jeff uh, to hear from Amherst College President uh, Biddy Martin update us on uh, initiatives at the college and also uh, uh, she asked for, and I was able to offer, and some others there as well, uh, uh, some highlights of what the town is, is doing, some of the key issues uh, facing the town. I um, wanted to thank President Martin uh, for, for that event and that uh, uh, ongoing dialogue uh, with Amherst College. Um, on... Uh, that was a, I guess that was a Thursday. Uh, last Friday, uh, I attended the, a forum sponsored by Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, Pioneer Valley Transit Authority, and a think tank called Mass Inc. Uh, at the PVPC offices down in Springfield on region-wide transportation needs and new financing strategies. Um, it was to hear from uh, uh, Tim Brennan from PVPC, Mary McGinnis, uh, PVTA administrator, uh, and uh, the author from Mass Inc. Uh, looking at the fact that just in the, in the, in the Pioneer Valley, there's over a billion dollars of uh, highway and transit investment needs. And uh, some of us there speculated that that number is actually conservatively low because those are our public transit, but also uh, on the roadway and bridge work, it's really just the big, so-called big projects, state numbered roads, et cetera. It's not, uh, as we know, uh, like most communities, the many, many neighborhood streets that also are in need of investment to bring them up to an acceptable standard. Um, but the report touched upon potential ways that that funding gap might be closed. and. Uh, 
there was a sense at this meeting that as we head into the next calendar year in particular, there may be uh, opportunities for uh, dialogue at the, at the legislative level to think through what, what, what is a longer term solution on these issues uh, uh, as opposed to muddling through, which I think could best characterize the last 25 years. Um, um, tomorrow I, I, I have the pleasure of speaking at the Campus and Community Coalition to Reduce High-Risk Drinking uh, sponsored uh, annual Lamplighter Awards over at the Campus Center at UMass. And we'll be talking about that ongoing partnership and honoring, uh, honoring this year's recipients. Uh, as mentioned in public comment, uh, public hearings will be happening in Amherst this Thursday, the 29th, from 2 to 4 and 5 to 7 p.m. at the Bank Center related to potential uh, PVTA fare increases uh, that would be needed to help close an estimated $1.8 million uh, PVTA budget gap. I want to make clear that these are draft proposals and the public hearing process here and elsewhere in the PVTA service area is a fundamental part of the PVTA advisory board's process, a board in which I chair uh, this year uh, before the PVTA board recommends any changes, if any. And uh, we don't anticipate taking action on any of this uh, uh, issue until our June meeting. So it's important that uh, the uh, writers and others be heard uh, at these public hearings and I encourage people to attend on Thursday at the bangs or submit uh, submit uh, comments to me or to the uh, PVTA itself. Um, and lastly, I want to mention a welcoming reception that has been scheduled for Thursday, April 12th from 2 to 4 p.m. in this room at Town Hall of, uh, for our new building commissioner, Rob Mora, as well as our new code enforcement officer, John Thompson. Uh, we've invited uh, members of the community uh, to that uh, reception, and we're also making a special effort to uh, invite representatives from the uh, business community and building trades to that. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Mr. Misanti? Okay, um, so we're a couple minutes early, strangely, for before our member reports. Ms. Brewer raises her hand. Actually, um, you were probably also <coughs> going to mention this dinner we got invited to um, oh. as board yes, right. on the 29th <coughs> so that you could remind me where it is. is really why I'm asking you. A number of us were invited, the select board and I were invited to a dinner uh, at the university uh, this Thursday evening at the campus center uh, Thank you. sponsored by this undergraduate student government association and we a uh, number of us have, uh, have accepted and we're looking forward to uh, looking forward to that event on Thursday. Thank you. Um, continuing that theme um, and taking care of a couple things that will be in my chair's report, which nobody tunes in for later. Um, I will also be speaking at the Campus and Community Coalition Lamplighter Awards tomorrow. Um, and it, it sort of figures into the to my liaison report, but um, but it's all related. That, of course, the uh, the pre-St. Patrick's Day issues were a big topic of conversation at Campus and Community Coalition. Also, they did receive a complaint about it from a faculty member who wanted them to lend their voice to trying to, uh, to mitigate uh, the impacts of this event. Um, and so that, that was a big topic of discussion. Um, additionally, we talked a lot about the spring and the, the things that, the kind of activity we can anticipate, how to coordinate around that, and how overall we need a plan. We need a plan, uh, much like kind of the select board's master calendar, that we anticipate certain things that happen all the time, you know, every year, and we need to be able to plug into uh, each of those dates, what the what the communication and coordination needs to be around all of those things. Um, one of the things that's part of the communication for spring, uh, and, and everyone has their own sort of 
area of communication, and not least of which is the Dean of Students Office and the uh, police departments, both Amherst Police and, and UMass Police Departments, and coordinating with students and landlords and, and residents off campus, et cetera. Um, but um, another part is just sort of the communications part. So I submitted a column or letter, I'm not sure which it'll be, uh, to the collegian that will, I hope, run this week. I haven't heard from them. Um, but again, just kind of putting out there, you know, th this is spring. You, you live in a magnificent community. This is, this is your home while you live here, and we hope that you will enjoy it, and we hope that you will respect it. Uh, very much the same message that I gave at our coffee hour with the student leaders in the fall. So I'm hopeful that that will run in the collegian. Um, and again, just kind of the whole uh, town gown thing. Um, Mr. Musanti and I also had a really tremendous meeting with the new dean of students, as well as yeah, uh, the associate dean, I believe this is titled David Valancourt, for off-campus, graduate and off-campus <coughs> students. And this was kind of a follow-up to a campus and community coalition meeting that Mr. Musanti had attended a couple of months ago, where a bunch of data was presented from all the different folks there about um, how the first semester had, had gone and expectations for the second semester. And uh, I talked earlier about the Dean of Students Office, or, or and just in general, how a number of folks in these different positions that, that the town has relationships with over these issues has changed. And so there's a new Dean of Students, and there is this newly created position of the uh, off-campus housing uh, associate dean, I believe is the name. Um, and so we were talking about what kind of accountability and discipline issues uh, have been going on. And in fact, I, I'm sure I speak for Mr. Musanti also, that um, we came away from that meeting so reassured and, and um, satisfied with the efforts that the university is taking. It's not always easy for them to communicate what they're doing in that regard because there, there are really tremendous privacy issues involved uh, regarding individual students. But, um, but those folks are looking for ways, I'm trying to find out what's making that noise. Um, <laughs> Those folks are trying to find ways to communicate more generally about what they're doing in ways that uh, that do protect the students' privacy, but it's also communicating to the campus community and to the larger community about the fact that expectations have changed on campus, and the expectations for student behavior are very high, and the consequences for uh, for violating those expectations can be very serious. Um, so, so they've got issues of coordination uh, on their end with kind of getting that message out appropriately and to the larger community. I subsequently met with uh, Nancy Buffon, who is the Executive Director for External Relations and Events, and we were talking a lot more about that communications piece also, how to, how to let the community know about the uh, the very important and, and progressive steps that the university has taken to deal with this. But again, it is, it's an enormous organization and the student body changes 25% every year. So it will take time to change that culture mm -hmm. and they are getting a lot of pushback even on the, the culture change that's happened so far. So suddenly when, when students are being held um, accountable in a very strict manner, well, their parents start to call and their clergymen start to call and they get legislators calling and everybody's threatening lawsuits and everything. Um, so the university really needs to be supported in the actions that it's taking because uh, if we're all serious about trying to change this kind of thing, then uh, the only way to change it is, is through through all of these many processes and, and part of that is, is accountability. So uh, lots of good stuff going on in those areas. That takes care of a bunch of stuff I was gonna say later. Okay, so member reports then. The first is the BCG report. Uh, in your packet of the summary points from that, I already talked a lot about um, one part of that, which is the, um, which on this list is uh, 3A, being the town manager's priority shared with the superintendent for finding funding for the uh, for the after-school child care program subsidies. Um, basically, BCG's situation is that the, the budget is balanced. Uh, Sandy Pooler, finance director, is constantly revising the, the um, projections for um, expenditures and revenue, and that, uh, that that is currently in balance with a gap at the elementary schools. The elementary schools have a little bit more than a $200,000 projected gap, um, which they have brought to the Finance Committee uh, for a request to fund from reserves. The Finance Committee had a very thorough conversation with them about, um, about 
the current finance committee policy, essentially the town's policy on reserve use as we have observed for the past couple of years, which is to say that we're not using reserves to fund general operating budget and, and ongoing expenses. We've been using reserves to try, and, to try and shore up our reserves and not go back to the bad old days of essentially spending more money than we had. Um, we're only endorsing as a town currently reserve fund use to fund uh, I, to, to be a bridge to either anticipated new revenue or anticipated cost savings. And this was obvious with the, uh, a, a couple years ago, with the closure of the Marks Meadow School. They needed some reserve funds for that to cover, to, to help smooth the last year of operation there in order to get to the cost savings they needed. Well, at this point, the elementary schools and the school committee have decided to um, pursue school choice at the elementary level for the first time or the first time in recent memory, uh, starting next year. The way that works with under the Mass General Laws is the money would be received in FY13 but is not available for expenditure until FY14. So the Finance Committee is satisfied with and the Town Manager is strongly endorsing uh, the reserve use as the bridge to that uh, to that money in FY14 that comes from school choice. So that's, that's what the recommendation is going to be currently. Um, but the t Finance Committee has not taken a formal position on that yet, but they did have a discussion where the sense of the body was that that's what they wanted to do. They're waiting final numbers on that. Um, and the other thing we talked about is, is another priority that is currently unfunded, and, and Ms. Brewer can fill in my gaps on this, but um, we'll recall that the uh, recently formed Regional School District Planning Committee, of which Ms. Brewer is our representative, along with uh, Mr. Steinberg from the Finance Committee and Ms. Oppie from the School Committee, uh, had pursued a grant to help fund the assistance that they believe they need to study the, the financial and legal implications of regionalizing through our elementary school system. The other towns in the region are putting funds into this and, and um, Amherst needs to kind of be on the same page with them as far as progress and in, in getting and being able to share the same information so they can have this conversation very constructively. That grant was not um, successful, so at this point, they, they are without money for, um, for being able to get that assistance. And at this point, they both don't know exactly what the costs are for the money they need, uh, what the costs are that they need to pay for, and hence they don't know the amount of money that they're going to need. So um, conversations are ongoing about that right now as the costs are being studied, and, and at some point a recommendation will, will come as appropriate to whomever about how they might look to be funding that. Anything else on that, Ms. Brewer? Um, at that absolutely is exactly right. And there's a meeting, in fact, taking place even as we speak where um, there's some discussion going on as to what other types of grants and funding might be available through the state because when you talk to the right people, you find out about all these other different programs you might not have been aware of, just as we had found out about this one only a mere number of weeks before we had to turn in the grant. So it was a good grant application, but as you'll recall from an email that I think I forwarded um, while I was away, there were tons of grant applications and so there's only so much money to go around and we didn't get it. Um, we are still having... Um, and obviously this feeds into my uh, later report, but we are still having a forum on the 11th that I'm, I'm gonna ask Harrison to uh, make sure we have time during the uh, town meeting article one to also update people on where we are because different communities are looking at this a little differently. Like of course Pelham, which is you know always so interesting at our four towns meetings, they're saying, hey, we might actually be able to put some money into this this spring. Well, the cynical side of me says, yeah, Pelham really needs to be worried about this right now. <laughs> so um, maybe they will have the money ready for the spring. We don't have dollars ready to know exactly what that'll be, but it's a, a work in progress. So you won't see any requests for funding associated with Springtown meeting, but it's a continuing topic of conversation. So that, that essentially covers the summary points. The only other uh, point it makes is that um, there's no additional recommendation. At, at, at this time last year, we the BCG's recommendation was okay, and any funds above and beyond what we're expecting should go to reserves. We're not far enough along to make that recommendation at this point, so um, should we find that this elusive 
$65 million that we keep talking about, half a million dollars to Amherst, um, does become available, uh, there would be uh, further discussions that would yield a recommendation on that in the future. Mr. Musanti, anything you want to add to any of that? No, just underscore the caution. You know, uh, I've mentioned and Mr. Pooler has mentioned uh, uh, multiple times in public that we're really trying to make this a low or no drama budget year. That doesn't mean we're flush. <laughs> It just means we're not looking at a multi-million dollar cut for the first time in five years. Um, so uh, at this point, we're looking at somewhere close to level funding of state aid. Um, and, uh, but we're still in a, in a precarious but slowly improving situation. So uh, it's in that kind of context that budget recommendations are being made. And I know, for example, there, there's a there's one neighboring community that has about a million dollar budget gap uh, are projecting that their health insurance costs are going up by 1.1 million dollars next year now we're very fortunate that we're not in having a need to recommend any health uh, health care insurance uh, increase uh, but if we had a uh, you know 10 or 12 percent increase we'd be looking at a million dollar increase and lo and behold we'd have a million dollar budget gap. So it's in that context, uh, I want to be very cautious about uh, spending recommendations that we make. Thank you. All right, questions or comments on BCG information? Jay. Then we move on to JCPC, Ms. Stein and Mr. Wild. I'll start and then Jim can fill in for JCPC. I wasn't there, so I'll leave it to you. <laughs> um, anyway, um, at the last JCPC meeting, um, the Community uh, Preservation Act Chair, Peter Jessup, came and spoke to us about uh, what had gone on uh, and the recommendations. And I've already mentioned the things that were going to be funded last time we met. Um, one of the things to keep in mind is that there's a $200,000 reserve uh, from those funds that should something come up. Um, say, for example, a unique opportunity to get a piece of open space that would be very valuable. There is some money there to work with. Um, then uh, we worked on a proposed list of fundings out of the many requests that um, we received that um, Mr. Pooler put forth, and there were some uh, a lot of it, we had studied them and had come back with our comments to the JCPC meeting. And a couple of issues, um, a couple of uh, requests that seemed particularly important uh, weren't on the proposed list. So he's gone back to try to put them in, too, that um, I think may receive funding that are part of that part of the, or two of who that weren't on, hadn't made the cut. Um, and I don't know what magic he's gonna have to work to try to get them in, but one was a $30,000, $33,000 request for security cameras in the library. The feeling has come that there really have been incidents there and that they need to have those cameras to record those incidents so that they can deal with the perpetrators. Um, these cameras, if they get funded, um, would not be recording, um, would not be uh, observed on real time like you see in TV where people sit there in front of TV screens and see what's going on in all parts of the building. But it would be a record of what had happened in the different areas of the Jones because that library has many spots where there are no staff people. Um, and it has been found in other libraries that just by virtue of having the cameras there and having signs up that this area is under surveillance, uh, a lot of the problems go away. So um, this was raised as a really important request. Now how, um, that, that was one. The other was a very modest request, um, which was a, um, many of the buildings in town are maintained, their exteriors are maintained. Um, 
and there are fund there is funding in the JCPC list for that. Um, but one building, which is a town-owned property, which has not received any funding despite the requests over several years, has been the Hitchcock Center. And the building is simply deteriorating. They are fighting B, um, that um, de damage, the wood, uh, rot, and, um, and we are actually, as a town, responsible for maintaining the exterior of that building. So as I say, I don't know what will be the final outcome of the revised list, but this is what has been going on in the meetings. And actually, we're going to have another meeting, which wasn't on the docket, so we can see the final list and OK it. Was that anything that you would like to add? No, that's what I, would, I unfortunately missed the last meeting, but that's my recollection of the way the conversation was heading. So I think it's been very thorough. Thank you. Okay, I, I actually could add a couple of uh, something that I'd forgotten. Um, well, actually, two things. One is that uh, the Kendrick Park project has simply been bumped from the five-year plan because it's over $3 million, and frankly, we just don't see being able to do that. As it is, we're going to be bonding um, uh, repairs to the downtown fire station that are absolutely need to be done tree planting, which was needed before the storm and certainly needed now, a major um, dump truck and sander that DPTW really was going to have to have given the snow conditions we had last year, if not this year. And then uh, there is federal mandated radio replacements um, for the police department, I think, that have to be bought. So um, those are very expensive items, all of those that are going to go out for bonding. It's the way we juggle. That's it. Thank you very much. Ms. Brewer. I was just, I was so pleased to have a, yet another opportunity to bring up the uh, idea of having that uh, report that tells us the condition of all the town buildings, because then we would also have that mm -hmm. as a reference for JCPC and for Hitchcock, especially given that Hitchcock, we know that there definitely. are changes afoot for Hitchcock and you know at what point you go ahead and maintain after you've waited a long time to maintain. So really looking forward to that report. Thank you. Um, I was wondering that you said that there's a lot of value to putting up the cameras and the signs for surveillance in the library, and I was just wondering how much value you could get from putting up the signs without the cameras. Okay. Like, that might be a big <laughs> One just wonder, <laughs> and uh, it would save $33,000 that we're going to have to find somewhere, but uh, I, don't, I don't think we can do that and announce it, can we? <laughs> <laughs> there may or may not be cameras. <laughs> All right, I have a few more. <clears throat> uh, the Agricultural Commission met, and um, uh, and some of the they would like very much to um, have a meeting with the Amherst Farmers Market to plan for next year, so that they can expand the market. And Mr. Musanti has agreed to facilitate such meeting, and the plan is to have it sometime before the beginning of the new year. Um, prior to that, they are going to do a survey of um, Amherst farmers to see who, in fact, are, uh, is interested in uh, participating in an expanded market. And the thinking has been that it might be um, that there are farmers who have <clears throat> goods for only a portion of the market uh, time so that shares could be, it, spaces in the market could be shared in some way. Um, and so that's um, what's going on there. Um, the Board of Health, I would like to make an announcement. There will be a public hearing on April 26th uh, regarding the new regulations on emissions from solid fuel burning devices. And I do want to um, note this one in particular because the fines for disobeying these regs are very high. The first offense is between $1,000 and $5,000. And the second offense is between five dollars and $10,000. And this is mandated apparently by state law once you put these in. So it, it's such a bump 
from what we're used to thinking about in terms of fines. I thought I should really mention that. Um, but anyway, the public hearing for it is April 26th, and my guess is that the um, proposed regs are probably on the website, but you could get a copy by going to the health department. Okay, moving onward. Um, let me see. Um, the Kanagasaki Sister uh, City Committee had a very busy uh, time, but a very lovely time in this very room. Um, I spoke my very limited Japanese to welcome them, and um, uh, that was fun. And then I had to introduce Mr. Musanti, <laughs> which I did by calling him John. Last name, totally gone. <laughs> <laughs> But it was a lot of fun um, having these visitors here, and um, I was able to participate in one of the potlucks, which was for the Jap uh, Japanese um, chaperones and teachers um, and translators, and actually had sat at a table with one member of the committee uh, and her spouse and this uh, lovely translator who uh, spoke excellent English, and uh, we got to share travel stories and things like that. It was very rewarding, and it, the feeling of the whole group was that this was really a delightful visit, um, maybe more uh, rewarding in particular since last year uh, the students couldn't come due to the um, catastrophe um, in Japan with the nuclear reactor meltdown. I don't think I want to say anything about that. Let me just take a quick look. Nope, I'm done. Thank you. Questions or comments from Ms. Stein? Thank you very much for handling the Kanagasaki Sister City Committee duties. It's uh, wonderful for them to have another devoted liaison, and uh, thank you for doing that. Um, okay. Oh, actually, yes. One short announcement, which is not a liaison thing, but uh, <clears throat> we all received an announcement from the Hitchcock Center saying they had still some spaces in, the, uh, in their programs for adults and for children. So if you're interested, contact them. Thank you. All right, other liaison reports from folks. Mr. Hayden. I just have two very quick ones. The uh, zoning subcommittee of the planning board have been working very hard. I see the, um, the indication of the fruits of their labors are on the uh, draft warrant that are in front of us tonight. Um, they've been um, spending a lot of time, extra meetings even, um, getting the form-based code for Atkins <coughs> Corners and North Amherst Village Center um, uh, massaged, corrected, made um, presentable for town meeting. There will be public hearings um, in front of the full planning board. Next week, I believe, is the first one on Wednesday. Um, you have to double check the website for that. Uh, but it's, I'm, I'm really rather impressed with, with um, um, how much they're taking in from the public and mm -hmm. you know, getting it into what will come in front of uh, town meeting uh, next month, a uh, month and a half from now. Um, I'm gonna urge everyone to pay attention to those. There are lots of words. It's, not, it's only frightening because it's large. Um, once you begin to, to, to read it, it's not bad at all. Um, and you'll recognize it, a lot of it from last year, of course. Um, also, I'm not going to be able to listen to um, my estimable colleagues speaking at the Lamplighter ceremony tomorrow because I'll be at the League of Women Voters uh, Meet the Candidates Night. Um, I'm hoping people will meet me um, as well as the other uh, folks who are stepping up to, uh, to do service for the town. Just to clarify, they don't actually overlap. Lamplighters is 3.30 to 5, <laughs> oh, and well. Candidates That's Night bad. starts 7 o'clock for the meet and greet and 7.30 for, uh, for the... Some of us work during the day. Yeah, but thank you for reminding folks about the, the league uh, night. Uh, Mr. Wild. Oh, sorry, were you finished? Uh, no. okay. uh, for Local Historic District Committee, which will be likewise uh, an item on the warrant, this time Article 28, I guess, according to the new list, and that basically proposes to install some uh, protections for historic resources and planning in the Dickinson district of Amherst. Uh, standard practice under Massachusetts general law. Obviously the local historic district study committee is in favor of the measure. Uh, 
but the article was also formally endorsed by the Historical Commission and Design Review Board, and on Wednesday last week, the Planning Board uh, voted to endorse it by a vote of six to three. We'll be taking it up later, of course, in this body. Thank you. Questions or comments from Mr. Walt? No? Anything else, Mr. Walt? No? Ms. Brewer? I was actually just gonna ask if we'll have some kind of report since that is not a complete slam dunk, apparently, based on some of the feedback we're getting. And so if we'll have something that we can read prior to the night that we take a position. Uh, for here, yes. I was gonna say that you can measure feedback by numbers or by volume. But, oh, of course. Uh, <laughs> But there will be something, I believe members of town, uh, town staff and members of historical commission and the study committee will be willing to come and present if necessary. But there is some, already some material was re, uh, presented to planning board last week because they took it up twice and wanted some additional information. So there'll be certainly text and Excellent. live entertainment as well, I think. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Um, actually, since I was away, Regional School District Planning Committee and BCG was all I've attended so far, and I'll leave it at that. Mentioned it earlier, so. Great. All right. Let's see. I think I covered all my, uh, yeah, my liaison reports. The uh, CONCOM meets tomorrow night, and Council on Aging. I was at another meeting, so I missed the last meeting, but I hope to be at the next one. Um, so that's the end of my liaison reports. Ms. Stein. This is so unlike me, but I really think that people should um, be aware of the fact that the men's basketball team from UMass has made <laughs> it into the national invitational tournament and uh, managed to actually beat two teams they were not expected to meet and are playing in the semifinals tomorrow night at the same time as the candidates. Thank you. And if they make it to the finals, that's the Both night. will be rebroadcast, I think. <laughs> Ms. Brewer. If I might ask um, the consideration of the town manager for a future town manager's item report, town manager's report item, something like that. Um, From me. Fran yes, exactly. <laughs> okay. I was just frantically looking for something online to see if it was already there and I just completely forgotten it. I've gotten several questions lately about uh, Boltwood Place, so if we could just have a brief update as oh, to where okay. things sure. are with that in terms of, for example, how much longer the trucks are going to be taking up a third of the surface parking, when they're going to be finished with the work, and what the permanent, which I had to admit I'd totally forgotten, what the permanent parking uh, expectations were going to be by the residents there. And I said, that was all discussed in another venue, but it wouldn't hurt to have an update. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Uh, let's see. Open meeting law update. Ms. Brewer, yes. anything on open meeting law? Oh, so um, she has to. Yeah, because I want to get I want to get the email out to Amy so that we can get the answer back on particularly about Jones Library trustees and um, the school committee and also what experience if they have any yet because I haven't seen anything published but to ask them if they've done a ruling on anything yet in terms of limitations. Okay. So and if we'll there was anything else we thought of. April yeah. 9th and yes, I hope that we might be able to get something for them. And absolutely. so folks who don't know what we're talking about because they don't read our minds. Um, that was about <laughs> the uh, remote participation part of the open meeting law which That's the select right. board is looking to have a town policy on by the end of this fiscal year. Okay, uh, chair's report, then the only things I didn't already talk about, that everything I talked about had to do with town gown stuff. I do actually do some other things. Um, I did speak, I offered remarks at the Tibet Day rally, which was actually the same day as the St. Patrick's Day pre-celebration. Um, and I read the town's proclamation uh, about Tibet Day, and that was, uh, people were very happy to have town representation there, and it was really a very lovely event. I did not join their march all the way to Northampton, but, uh, but they had a beautiful day for it. Um, I also uh, offered remarks at the Girl Scout celebration, which was the next day. I had attended briefly, and Ms. Stein was able to attend for the whole thing, the uh, Amherst Follies uh, fundraiser for the Senior Center, which was at Buckley Recital Hall at Amherst College, and it was just magnificent. And unfortunately, I had to leave uh, just before intermission so that I could go to the Girl Scout event, but that was also a really lovely event, and that was on the Common, and that was wonderful. I, but I, I attended the whole performance, and the second half was just amazing. There's a high school seniors uh, male uh, who sang so fantastically, I can't even tell you, but the rest of the second half was good too. All right. I 
Did we cover all of the untimed items that we need to cover? So. All right, then um, I will make the motion to go into executive session as is noted on the agenda. I move that the select board go into executive session per Massachusetts general law chapter 30A section 21A subset six to consider the purchase, exchange, lease, or value of real property because an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the negotiating position of the public body. Open session will not reconvene at the conclusion of executive session. I need a roll call vote, please. Brewer, aye. Stein, aye. O'Keefe, aye. Wald, aye. Hayden, aye. And so that adjourns the open meeting session of this meeting 